I'm Erin Runyon, and you're watching Facets Television. My name is Alan Orlob. I'm the chairman of the Homeland Security Advisory Council for the Orange County Sheriff's Department, and you're watching Facets Television. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Kevin McDonald. You're watching Facets Television. And with us this evening is Under Sheriff Don Barnes. He's the Under Sheriff for the Orange County Sheriff's Department here in Southern California. Under Sheriff Barnes has been with the department for more than 29 years and has basically taken about every command position there is within the department. I want to welcome you for coming in. Thank you so much. Thanks, Kevin, for having me. So um, I understand you're running for sheriff and that, in fact, uh, not only you're running for sheriff, but that you were endorsed directly by the current sheriff, Sandra Hutchins. Is that accurate? Yes. In fact, uh, Sheriff Sandra Hutchins recently announced that she's not running for re-election. Mm -hmm. She will be uh, leaving at the end of her term, her second elected term, and has announced that she has endorsed me as her successor for sheriff, as well as many other people within the political and civic area of Orange County. So I can see why she's done that. I mean, basically, you came up from the ranks in the department. You've been um, with the department for a good part of your life. And uh, having worked with you directly, and I'm going to be direct, I actually have worked uh, with Under Sheriff Barnes on an advisory council for a number of years. So um, I know that you have immense respect coming from the, from the rank and file in the department. And so what I need to ask is, what makes you a good manager? Well, like you said, I've been with the department. I'm on my 29th year with the Sheriff's Department. I'm homegrown, if you will. Mm -hmm. Started with the Orange County Sheriff's Department back in the late 80s. Mm -hmm. I spent my entire career with the organization. I worked every aspect of the organization, whether directly as a line staff, supervisor, manager, and executive, and now as the under sheriff overseeing the fifth largest Sheriff's Department in the nation, 3,900 employees. 24 commands, mm -hmm. uh, 700 volunteers that I love. They do a tremendous add value to the organization in ways that save the taxpayers a lot of money. But I think that there's nobody that has intimate knowledge of the organization like I do, which gives me really a different perspective on how to address issues. Mm -hmm. uh, I still know most of the people who work here. Yeah. And for that reason, I have relationships with them and help solve problems in different ways. And having that trust, I think, is going to be important um, as you move forward. So for those that don't know, uh, this department covers a lot more than what most people can imagine. So can you, like, it's, it's Harbor, it's the airport, it's the unincorporated areas of the county. Can you give an idea of how big the, the footprint of the Orange County Sheriff's Department really is? That's actually one of my favorite things about the Sheriff's Department. We've started a Citizens Academy and mm -hmm. I do the introductory remarks at the Citizens Academy and I always tell them at the end when you graduate I'm going to ask you this question, mm -hmm. what did you learn about the Sheriff's Department that you didn't know? Mm -hmm. And it's amazing when people, they just don't realize the magnitude of the services that we provide through the Sheriff's Department. Yeah. So as I said, we are the fifth largest Sheriff's Department in the nation. People are sometimes surprised by that because we're kind of overshadowed by Los, An Los Angeles. It's a large Sheriff's Department. Mm -hmm. And so we're a little bit smaller, but we're still large comparatively. We do everything that you could think about to do in law enforcement. We have uh, custody operations, court operations, patrol operations. We do patrol services for 13 cities in Orange County. Mm -hmm. uh, we have three contracts within the county, county to county, through Harbors, Parks, and Beaches, the Harbor uh, John Wayne Airport and Orange County Transportation Authority. Mm -hmm. We have an Orange County Intelligence Infusion Center if, um, that I know you are aware of. Yes. Okay. SWAT teams, uh, air support, you name it, we've got it. 35 canines, uh, five different drug teams, narcotics enforcement teams. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just a full service organization. And recently started a cyber crimes unit, the first in the county to do such a thing, which has been incredibly important because, as you know, uh, the FBI doesn't 
has a threshold of what they look at for uh, actionable cases. Secret service as well. Yeah. Well, and I think it's important for law enforcement um, to, to try to step into that. A lot of times we see it as a civil matter, and it's really not. Some of these crimes are actually more severe than most robberies these days because nobody robs banks anymore, at least the smart ones don't. Um, no, so. you don't have to rob somebody at an ATM anymore. Now you can do it from the other side of the world without exactly. them oftentimes even knowing about it, yeah. sometimes for months, yeah. and not just monetarily, uh, information, security information, taking over uh, security and control of an infrastructure mm -hmm. is uh, not uncommon to happen anymore. People being held hostage to pay out of that. So as you know, cybersecurity is a, is a huge uh, risk. Yeah. And being defensible against that is even a, uh, more important now than ever because well, technology I'm, is advancing. And I'm excited to see the department take a hold of that. I really am. I think it's important for us as as the community to have that representation and not have to go to FBI LA or U.S. Secret Service LA or, or whatever it takes to get help, to have someone in the county actually doing that is fascinating. So um, you have some significant challenges coming running this department. We've had a number of propositions and pieces of legislation that have been absolutely counter to public safety. So if you can give the public a little bit of an idea of what you have to face as the new sheriff if you were elected. How much time do we have? Yeah, that's true. Everything, well the last several years of uh, legislation coming out of Sacramento, it's really, everything coming out right now is attack on three strikes. Mm -hmm. uh, AB 109, Assembly Bill 109, was the state prison realignment. Back a few years ago, the state was sued, Governor Brown was sued about the prison population being over the allowable capacity of mm -hmm. the state prison system. And one of the ways he resolved that was with AB 109. Took state prison inmates and relocated them, shifted them down into local jails for incarceration. Mm -hmm. and that's had profound impacts on our jail operations. People don't realize how jail operates different than a state prison would operate. State prisons are designed for long-term incarceration of those who mm -hmm. commit major crimes. Mm -hmm. Taking, now we have 725 of those in our custody. It's a large number in our jail system um, now housed here. We have one inmate, one prisoner in our custody who's going to serve an 18-year sentence inside a jail not designed for long-term incarceration. Orange County or jail systems overall are designed for short-term incarceration one year or less. So that's been the first shift that's happened. Uh, drug, uh, drug smuggling inside the jails has doubled. Uh, uses of force on staff and uses of force uh, inmate to inmate, sorry, not use of force, but assaults yes. uh, from on staff, assaults on, uh, from inmate to inmate have also increased exponentially. It's a much more difficult population to manage within the jail system. Well, they have a lot less to lose when they're in 18 years already, right? You're not talking about somebody who wants to be nice and get out in a year. You're talking about somebody who's going to be there a couple decades and what's another year or two, it's right? It's very hard to get voluntary compliance from somebody who has very little to use. And programming's different between county jails and the state prison system. They have more freedom in the state prison system to move around where they're very isolated yeah. inside a county jail system because yeah. they're not designed for long-term incarceration. We also have challenges from what I can see, uh, the mental health issues and you have to take care of their health care. And by the way, taxpayers, you get to pay for all of this. Uh, it's no longer on the state macro level, it's on the county micro. So you're now paying for all of what the state used to be responsible for paying. Um, so there's a couple of more that are actually reducing crimes to a ridiculous uh, level, and I think this is going to have a significant impact on the county. What do we have to look forward to based on the, the latest couple of, uh, of propositions that have passed? Several propositions have passed, but I don't want to cover one statement you just made about mental health. Please. Uh, right now in Orange County, there are only 10 mental health beds. Mm -hmm. And so when somebody has a mental health crisis, uh, they're taken to the emergency room. The most expensive component of medical treatment is now treating the offshoot of the lack of services for mental health. Yeah. The county supervisors are moving to find solutions, so it's not like we're not trying to find some solutions to deal, deal with that. But the downside of that is somebody de degenerates in their mental health, you know, health, uh, they may violate the law yep. and then come into our custody. Orange County Jail is the largest mental health hospital within Orange County. 25% yeah. of the population requires mental health services in some way, and a lot of dual diagnosis between mental health issues and, and drug uh, issues happen as well. Which makes it exponentially worse, because you have to deal very, with all of the ramifications of someone who's an addict coming off of a drug and then having not taken their, their meds in many cases as well. Uh, which the, leads me to the next 
legislative issue. That's where I was going to go, so please. So you mentioned several different initiatives that have passed. Prop 47 in 2016, um, sorry, 2014, November, was passed. And what this proposition did was categorically reduce from felonies to misdemeanors the two mm -hmm. largest categories of crime, property crimes and drug crimes, made them, f took them from felonies to misdemeanors. And what the public I don't think understands is it changed the way we can address those law violations. When they're not felonies anymore, we can no longer book them into jail for mm -hmm. the crime. We issue them a citation and release them back into custody. By law, that's what we're required Which includes low dollar value home burglary, right? Well, residential burglary is the only exception that wasn't changed. Okay. But commercial crimes, commercial right. burglaries are, uh, were reduced as well. And the criminal population knows this. Yeah. They know that if they can commit a property crime and keep it below $950 in value, and they'll take it right up there. They'll tell you what the value of the property is that they've stolen, yep. and they'll say, I know that you have to write me a ticket and let me go. That's amazing. It's amazing. And there is a connection between property crime and drug crimes. People steal property, sell it, get money, buy drugs, right. Right, and the cycle continues. So Kevin, who is a, an addict, needs to steal property to sell it for drugs. And mm -hmm. I've had to catch you, take your property from you. You're not going to stop stealing. You're going right. to have to go steal more property to get drugs. Or if I catch you and take your drugs from you, you're not going to stop using go drugs. steal more property and do it again. Sell drugs. Yeah. So there's a cycle that continues through this continuum in that. Not to mention the drugs have gotten more significant as well. Uh, we had a conversation a while back about the fentanyl yeah, craze it's that's deadly. happening. Police officers are, are damn near getting killed just from touching it or being around it. That is a phenomenon that's ha occurring across the nation from fentanyl. We've had an increase uh, rate of, of fentanyl on the West Coast. The Orange County Crime Lab recognized that trend about two years ago. Mm -hmm. And since then, we've seen our overdose deaths related to fentanyl uh, increase each year going forward. And we, c we should continue to see that trend, unfortunately continue. Now that's also because of the Narcan resistance, is it not, as well? Well, there is, and it's an uh, opioid antagonist, which is naloxone. Okay. And all of our sheriff's deputies now carry naloxone with them in patrol, mm -hmm. including our crime lab staff and the coroner's office. And unfortunately, because I mentioned AB 109 drug smuggling, yep. our deputies in custody operations. And we've all seen saves from that. We've saved over a dozen lives who were overdoses from uh, fentanyl or heroin. So the, just so you know, and maybe the public needs to know what fentanyl is, yes. fentanyl is 50 times more potent than heroin. Mm -hmm. There's a new drug coming on, with it, which is uh, a takeoff, carfentanil, which is 100 more times more potent than fentanyl, yeah. which is 50 more t t times more potent than heroin. So the, for the average person who doesn't have uh, tolerance built up, if you have a skin contact, you can overdose on that. Yeah. And that's what we've seen happening nationally. with A lot, lot of, of children and toddlers too. Uh, yeah. Anybody who comes in contact with something they believe to be heroin should not contact it or touch it. They should call law enforcement for their own safety. Yeah. should call law enforcement. Yeah. We've even changed the way we have to treat it in the field. It's almost like a hazmat case. Double gloved respirator goggles because nationally officers while searching or handling something they accidentally aerate it in a car, inhale it and have had near deaths because of the toxicity, the, the levels yeah. of, uh, of yeah. fentanyl. In fact, the cartels can't sell heroin anymore. Because nobody wants it, it's too weak. Nobody wants yeah. it. They want uh, fentanyl-laced heroin, which gives yeah. them that. It's like watered-down soda. Who wants it, right? Exactly. Yeah. Same thing. So um, I would be not doing my job if I didn't ask you about the challenge um, that you had recently with the uh, breakout at the, at the jail. So sure. uh, can you? Give us an idea of where you think the department failed and what has been done to, to take care of that in the future. Well, we made no excuses. It's not our brightest moment. Uh, it was embarrassing for us, and there were some failures that occurred, and those have been remedied. We've, mm -hmm. through policy and raising performance expectations at that facility, okay. everybody stepped up. Uh, that we took personal. So we d we've changed some of the security enhancements at the jail. Uh, I don't want, I want to be too careful because I don't want to give the other team the playbook on of what course. we've done. But security has increased significantly. We brought technology in for tracking. We brought in different camera systems and lighting. Okay. Um, a lot of different things have happened. I can tell you this, and that happened, I was the under sheriff for three weeks and a day, and, and I hadn't been in custody operations within my command for many years. Right. But I routinely go over there, and I don't tell them I'm coming. 
I don't do the. I don't want to see the facility in parade ready. I want to see it operational ready. Yeah. And I have been amazed. No white glove inspections that are called for, right? No, they know I'm coming. And yeah. uh, I've been there several times. I was there about two months ago to see one of the counts being done, and it was done flawlessly and to the highest performance expectations that we could expect. The deputies inside our custody operations in that facility are doing a phenomenal job, and I'm very proud of the work that they do. It's a tough That's job. Yeah. It's tough when you have 1,200 inmates, we call them tenants, that are continuously trying to break the place. And uh, they don't make the best tenants. Yeah, just to be annoying in general as well, right? Well, they're high demand. And they're bored and... You know, nothing better to do for 24 hours a day. Than exactly, I can imagine. Mess with the place. So, uh, really quickly, while well, we, we have about a minute left, um, so there's a lot of people that are going to be making a decision about whether they vote for Don Barnes for sheriff. Mm -hmm. um, what makes you the right man for the job? Well, as I mentioned to you already, I've been with the organization 29 years. Uh, I've, worked, I've worked every aspect of the organization on both sides, the professional staff side and the sworn side. I think I'm the most knowledgeable about uh, how to solve problems. Many of them have already been corrected, mm -hmm. and I have a great idea of where I want to take the organization in the future. Sheriff Sandra Hutchins has done a great job of setting the table for us to take us to the next level, and I'm looking forward to uh, taking us there with the 3,900 men and women of the Sheriff's Department, and I would be pleased and proud to lead this organization for the next several years. Uh, as the sheriff of Orange County. Well, that's great, and I really, really very much appreciate you uh, honoring us with your presence on the show today, and uh, best of luck in the campaign. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate it. Thank you. You've been watching Facets Television. I'm Kevin McDonald, and with us has been Under Sheriff Don Barnes, who is also candidate for sheriff of Orange County, California, in the 2018 election, and we will see you again soon. Thanks for coming. I'm Don Barnes, Orange County Under Sheriff. I'm running for sheriff in 2018. For more information about my campaign, you can go to www.barnes4sheriff, that's F-O-R, for sheriff, dot com. And you're watching Facets Television. Hi, this is Rick Warren, and you're watching Facets Television. Welcome back to Facets Television. I'm Kevin McDonald, and this evening we have Under Sheriff Don Barnes with the Orange County Sheriff's Department and Alan Orlob, who's the Vice President of Global Safety and Security for Marriott International. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming in. I appreciate that very much. Um, we're also going to talk about today about the positions that these gentlemen hold with the Orange County Homeland Security Advisory Council, and that's the primary reason why we're here. So. Um, Alan, let me first say, as the chairman of the organization, um, what was the driver behind starting the Orange County Homeland Security Advisory Council? So about three years ago, uh, Sheriff Hutchins uh, asked me to meet with her, and, and we talked about uh, forming this uh, Homeland Security Advisory Council. Uh, we talked about uh, having a public-private partnership uh, between the, the private sector and, and the Sheriff's Department so that we could have a, a forum for exchanging information. So, so at that time, we talked about uh, kind of the burning security issues that could affect uh, both people and, and businesses in Orange County. And we landed on three. Uh, the first was terrorism. We were seeing more and more terrorism uh, around the world. Uh, we looked at cyber because uh, uh, cyber attacks uh, continue to proliferate. Yes. And natural disasters is always an issue in Orange County. We're uh, close to the fault. Uh, so those were the three areas that we wanted to focus on. So cyber also impacts the infrastructure. And of course, I, I believe and predict we're going to see a lot more terrorism through cyber. So I, I love that combination. It's a, it's a really well thought combination. So um, Under Sheriff Barnes, you have this future position potentially as the new sheriff, but un as your current undersheriff, what's your feeling about the OCHSAC and, and how do you feel about the program? Well, the Homeland Security Advisory Council is, is an imperative for the county. Orange County has a lot of high profile targets um, and we would not want to ever see something happen like that, that happened in San Bernardino here. Yeah, of course. We have our only, uh, we're the only county in the state that has its own fusion center, the Orange County Intelligence assessment center mm -hmm. working in concert with the Homeland Sec uh, Security HSAC, Homeland Security Advisory Council mm -hmm. and OC Shield and other aspects of outreach and collaboration with the community. We have to have that collaboration with the community because we cannot do this on our own if everybody else isn't buying into their own security, their own uh, what they can do to safeguard themselves through businesses and also individuals. 
So it's a more of a collaborative approach. It's a partnership. Mm -hmm. uh, Alan has been tremendous in his lead in, the, in his role as the chair mm -hmm. of the council. So everything is about inclusion. Inclusion, education. Every year we get away from 9-11 is, is, without something happening is this belief, and I think it's a false belief, mm -hmm. a belief that it's not going to happen anymore. And it's quite the opposite. The threat levels are increasing. Mm -hmm. The method of operations from our adversaries are increasing. Uh, home, uh, homegrown violent extremists are more, uh, have a greater likelihood of occurring. Mm -hmm. So all these things create a different threat horizon for us and we have to collaborate and make people aware of how they can keep themselves safe. So with that said, Alan, in your position um, with Marriott International, I imagine that you have a really good sense of what's going on around the world and is that what helped to drive you to take this position because, you know, you're a busy man uh, and adding one more job has to be a, a hard decision to make. Well, we do. We have, uh, uh, we have our own analytical team and we're looking around the world uh, constantly to determine where the threats are. And uh, so certainly I've been dealing in this space for a long time. I was, uh, uh, before I went to work for Marriott, I was a special forces uh, soldier. So, uh, so I've been dealing with, with uh, terrorism and, and, and threat vectors for a, a long time. And that's what we look at now, uh, what the threats are to Orange County and what could affect Orange County. So we, um, with the uh, Homeland Security Advisory Council, we kind of, we, we try to educate people. Uh, uh, we try to uh, uh, build an awareness so that they, uh, they're, uh, we call it in, in our world, we call it situational awareness. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to, to ingrain that in people so that when they see something, uh, they say something. And, uh, and the last part of that is relationship building. Uh, both private to private sector so that we bring people together and and develop that relationship and then certainly private to public sector so they have that reach out to uh, the sheriff's department to the FBI to DHS to the different uh, uh, public agencies that can help them and I can imagine that you know as someone who's in cyber and I do I deal with the the damage that can be done on a daily basis um, and I can only imagine if something really nasty were to go down and this county were to go sideways for some reason, the last thing an executive of a major corporation or even a mid-sized enterprise or small business wants to be doing is catching up. Who do I call? What do I do? Where do I, you know, their risk managers might have the basic disaster plan and all that, but that's not going to do it if we're going to have to put the county back together. So my view of HSAC is that, that you are acting as a conduit to make sure that that communication is preset and pre-prepared and that you have ideas and plans and educated people. Is that not accurate? You know, that's absolutely true. And uh, we've done some very successful conferences. Mm -hmm. uh, we brought in Steve Bernard from Sony Pictures, who's the chief security officer there. Uh, as you know, Sony suffered a, a major hack yeah, a few sure years did. ago. Uh, we brought in uh, some several companies. Sean Henry uh, came in uh, from CrowdStrike. And, uh, and talked at one of our conferences. So again, it's those, it's, it's those conferences we have that educate people and give them that awareness. And also through the conferences, people are able to, to mingle and, and, and again, build relationships. And we'll make sure before the end of the show that we give you information on how to find out more about those conferences. Don, um, as the chief operating officer for the department, how, how does an organization like this help you to do your job in the event of, of, of an emergency or a major disaster or attack? Well, it's like anything else. Without the, when something happens, you can't build the relationships. You have to have them up front. You have yeah. to have the collaboration, that network in place. Um, that's the best thing about what we do with the HSAC is to have that connectivity, have everybody in this construct of response before something were to happen. And the best thing about the, the symposiums and the conferences that Alan's referring to is all these entities coming together probably learn more from each other than they do just from the people who are educating and what the issues are. It's, it's everything about getting ahead of the trends, educating everybody, being preventive in posture, then having that network of response if it has to be there, which of course we hope it's not. But of it makes course. Orange County much deeper. We cannot do this alone. We have to have the synergy of getting everybody on the same page, how we're going to respond, how we're going to support each other. Because mm -hmm. we will need commerce and, and business support if something were to happen, just like they need the law 
support to be there with them as well. As you're probably aware, Orange County, through our OCIAC, has 5,000 terrorism liaison officers. Those are officers trained through fire and law and other entities to be in there on the lookout constantly of the threat horizon, what they see, to see something, say something, mm -hmm. comes no better than from the first person public safety provider and what's happening within the county. And Actually, sharing I'm proud that. to say I'm going to be presenting at the next TLO training. So Great. I'm, yeah, doing a cybersecurity training for that for that group. So that's great. Uh, I can see the value in that. And in fact, that's how I found out about OC, um, HSAC or, or HSAC was by attending a conference a while mm -hmm. ago mm -hmm. and then recently attending a, a training. Mm -hmm. And I went, wow, this group's great, but not enough people know about it. So sure. um, from the perspective of needing more interaction, it sounds to me like OC Shield is another organization that comes out of the department, but they're more focused on the risk management people, the people that are in the nuts and bolts. We need much more of the executives to be involved because without executive sponsorship, none of this is going to happen, right? It has to start at the top. Yeah. It, it always yeah. starts at the top. To have that as an imperative of any organization, and we have high targets within Orange County, mm -hmm. Fortune 500 companies, it has to be, it has to start at the top as an initiative to push down something that's important for everybody working there. And that yeah. leadership is, it needs to happen at the top. So as the chair, um, what, what are you looking for from the community's executives? Is it, is it direct interaction? Is it sponsorship? Is it involvement? Is it both? Is it support all. of their staff? Every, everything, yeah. Okay. I mean, um, certainly we're not, uh, we're not funded. Uh, we don't have any funding from the sheriff's department or or any public organization, mm -hmm. uh, so certainly that's that's always a struggle with a, an organization like ours. Um, but we need involvement. We want people to get involved. We want people to attend the conferences. We want we want to build those relationships. Uh, you know, I, I've been working in the national security sphere for many many years, and and. Uh, uh, to me, it's just part of my DNA, and uh, uh, I, I think when people come to, especially coming to the conferences, mm -hmm. and uh, and see what we're doing, I, I think they're going to get us excited about it. Well, and I know that the executives, um, and I've dealt with this in different not-for-profits and public good, which is what this organization is, right? Um, and they bring a unique set of skills as executives that the organization needs to move forward and and I look at folks and I'm like you have children you have wives and and sisters and moms and sons that all need us to be involved so this is a perfect place in my opinion to put some of your effort um, take some of those unique skills that you have as an executive and help to grow an organization using what you've done to grow your own business and it's really not that different right that's right the only difference is we don't get to take profit home when we run a not-for-profit sure so what's your biggest challenge besides funding right now as far as the organization's growth and, and that goes? Well, I think part of it is just getting the word out. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to get the word out to, uh, to uh, senior business level people in Orange County mm -hmm. and, uh, and make sure that they understand that we have this organization and then start uh, um, supporting the organization because we need that support. Yeah. So, um, Don, if we find you uh, as our next sheriff, is this a program that you intend to continue? This is a very important program uh, for Orange County, okay. mainly for the reasons I previously stated. Mm -hmm. uh, every month we get away, it's more important to be actively involved in our own security posture within Orange County. Mm -hmm. The threat isn't waning, it's getting more significant every year. So yes, I think it's, it's going to be an initiative of, of the Sheriff's Department, of mine, mm -hmm. to make sure that we keep our Homeland Security Division whole, uh, which is becoming challenging with some of the funding challenges that we have. But I think we do that by partnering with the public and getting them actively involved in their own safety. And this is a program where you get much more out of it than you have to give. Yeah, Participation is very limited, that's the case. but the value is immense. I haven't, uh, for those that know me and watch this show, I haven't joined in, in involvement in a not-for-profit in many years and recently um, was placed on the advisory board for this group and that's one of the reasons why I'm like I have to get out the word this is too important for people not to understand this um, and as a cybersecurity person who understands SCADA which is the supervisory control and data acquisition I know it's technical but it's what controls your mechanical world if we don't do something to control our homeland security um, we're all at risk our food our water our transportation everything about us so I felt like hey this is one place where I could take the time out of my day to do it and sure. it's very worthwhile um, 
where do you see the program going over the next 12 months and when is the next uh, in general when will we can the public expect the next conference so we're looking at doing another cyber conference in okay. october mm -hmm. uh, october is is uh, uh, cyber security month so we thought it would be appropriate to have another conference during october so we're scheduling that okay. uh, and we'd love people to uh, attend the conference and and uh, find out what they didn't know about cybersecurity. You know, it's interesting because we did a cybersecurity conference, and uh, and we had someone in the audience who listened to it, and his company, uh, within the next two weeks, had a hack, and uh, because he had attended that conference, he came back to us and said, you know, I I knew everything I should do, and uh, and I was able to take those preventative measures uh, because I had been educated at this conference and those are the you know that's uh, music to my ears when I hear that kind of, of thought because that's what we're trying to do and in cyber timing is everything um, yeah. so knowing what to do early in the process is very important to your point sure and not knowing what to do can cause you to make big mistakes um, and, and that is one thing we don't want to miss the Orange County Intelligence Assessment Center if you don't know what to do call them that's the first thing you do because they'll filter you out to the right people. Um, they're actually designed there to figure out what part of the law enforcement ecosystem do you fit in. Um, so from the perspective of, of that conference, we're figuring in October, um, what type of, uh, of an event are we looking at for those that might look forward to it? Well, normally we've done something at the uh, uh, either the Pacific Club or or a, uh, a venue such as that. So, and, and we normally start off with a reception, a kind of a wine and hors d'oeuvres uh, reception so that people can get a chance to meet each other and chat a little bit. And then we'll bring in the speakers after that. Well, that's great. So we'll, uh, we'll post some information at the end of this show so that those that can find out. And I want to thank both of you gentlemen for thank what you, you do every day and thank for coming you, in. You've been watching Facets Television. I'm Kevin McDonald, and this evening with us has been Under Sheriff Don Barnes with the Orange County Sheriff's Department, Alan Orlob, who is the Chairman of the Orange County Homeland Security Advisory Council and Vice President of Global Security and Safety for Marriott International. Thank you so much for watching, and we hope you'll come back.